Serial communication is always handy when you need to send digital data using few connections. There are a lot of serial communication protocols, but a few are more popular than the other, especially when using basic microcontrollers such as the PIC or the Arduino. Today we will see what is a serial communication protocol and we will see three main examples. Word communication, I2C and SPI. I will tell you the main characteristics of each one of these, show you how they work and why use one and not the other, and also show you a small example using the Arduino. We should also see the signals on the oscilloscope, in order to get a better view and by that understand more. So let's see how the WART, I2C and SPI work, but before make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell. And also thanks to all my patrons for the support, so let's get started. The sponsor of this video is JLCPCB. Thanks to all users feedback, they are improving their services every day. Even this is your first time, ordering PCBs is very easy and all you have to do is to upload the Gerber files to JLCPCB.com. Select the settings that you want and you could get 5 PCBs of any color for only $2. What's up my friends, welcome back. So what is a serial communication protocol? Well, it's a way of transmitting data in a line, one data after the other, and in this case we are talking about digital data. Imagine that you want to send the number 198, which in binary, which are just ones and zeros, will be 11000110. You could connect a wire for each bit and send the high digital pulse for ones and the low value for zeros, and do that at the same time. So in just one moment you can send all the bits at the same time. This is called a parallel communication. The downside of this kind of communication is that we have to use 8 connections plus the ground reference, so a total of 9 cables. But this is for 8 bits. Imagine that you want to send a 16 bits data. In that case we will need 17 cables, and usually we want fewer connections. So instead of sending the data each bit at the same time, what we will do is to place the bits in series and then we send each one, one after the other using just one cable. But you could already see the downside of this type of communication. If we send 16 bits in parallel, we need only one clock pulse to send all the data. If we send the same data using serial communication, we will need 16 clock pulses to send the same amount of data, so this will be 16 times slower. So that's the main disadvantage of using serial communication. As examples for serial communication, we have the SBUS, the PPM, the JTAC connection, WART, I2C, the CAN, SPI, MIDI, USB, RS-233 and more. And even the Morse code could be a serial communication. Ok guys, so we have mentioned that clock pulses before. Depending on this clock, serial communication could be synchronous or asynchronous, and the main difference is that one uses the clock to send the data at a specific speed and time, and the asynchronous doesn't have a clock. So how do you know where one bit will end and where the next bit will start, if you don't have any clock? To understand that, we start with the most basic asynchronous serial communication, WART or Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. This type of communication uses only one cable to send the data plus the ground reference. The transmitter cable will be named TX and the receiver will be RX. The transmitter starts sending bits whenever it wants. So how does the receiver know when the incoming data starts, where it ends, when we have a bit or the other and so on. For that, what communication will need to place some common configuration between the transmitter and the receiver. Before making the connections, you need to make sure that both the X and the RX will work with the same settings. Three of these settings are the transmission speed in bouts per second, the data length in bits and how is the start and the stop bit. So let's see what are these. Imagine that you want to send the number before 198. The representation in digital pulses of this would be this one. So with this data we already know that we will send 8 bits, so now we know the data length. The transmitter and receiver must have the same configuration. But if we analyze the word signal, we won't see only these 8 bits. We will see something like this. That's because word needs a start bit and an end bit. Usually the word signal is always high 
and the start bit will be represented by a low pulse. So that makes very easy for the receiver to detect when the data starts. Each time we detect a low pulse, we know that we need to start reading the input data. And now here comes the third configuration, the speed of transmission. Without knowing the speed, the receiver won't be able to know when one bit will end and the other one will start, and by that it will ring the wrong value. For that we need to set the speed in bouts per second. A very common word speed is 9600 bouts per second. That means that the length of the bit will be 1 divided by 9600, and that equals to 104 microseconds. So now all the receiver has to do after detecting the start bit is to count time. We count 104 microseconds and then we are at the beginning of the first input bit. But we don't usually save the value here, because the data is unstable. So we will go in the middle of the bit. So we count 52 microseconds more. And now we save the first bit and then we count 104 microseconds more and save the second bit and so on. Once the receiver has all 8 bits, we'll wait for the stop bit, which is represented by a high pulse and then we can send the received data from the buffer to the rest of the system. This exact same setup could be made with different speeds or different amount of bits for the same data. Usually the start and stop bits are always like this. So that's how the word communication works. Another version of the word communication is the RS-232 that is used by old computers. The Arduino for example uses the word communication to upload the codes or send the data to the serial monitor. This right here is a word chip and you will also see that it has a DTR pin and sometimes you will see a CTS pin. These pins are used to notify that the data terminal is ready and that the receiver is clear to receive, so in this way we won't have flow problems. I connect the Arduino and here I have the word signal on the oscilloscope and right now I'm sending the number before, 198. As you can see we have exactly the representation before. The start bit, the data and the stop bit and the rest of the time the signal is high. Usually devices will have both the TX and the RX pins, so they could both send and receive data with the same protocol. Ok guys, next we need to take a look at the first synchronous serial communication and this is the I2C or the Inter Integrated Circuit. This protocol was developed by Philips and in this case we need two connections plus the ground reference. One wire will send the data and this will have the name of SDA and the second wire is the clock because this is a synchronous communication and it will have the name of SCL. Once again we need to specify the amount of bits that we will send and also to know the clock frequency for both the transmitter and receiver. Usually I2C could work with speeds up to 400 kilobits per second and it will send data of 15 or 16 bits. In this case at the same time that we send the data, we also create a clock pulse with the same frequency as the bits of the data, so the receiver will know exactly when one bit will end and the next one will start, so this can go faster since we don't need to count the time as in the word communication. Also using I2C, the transmitter will send all kind of data, but only certain receiver will be able to save the values. We do that with the use of the slave address. Each receiver will have a different slave address. So the transmitter will first send the address, which for example could be 68, then it will send the data. So only the receiver with the 68 slave address will store the data into its buffer. So the word communication is a one to one communication, but the I2C could be used with multiple receivers. For example this MPU6050 module uses I2C communication. I connect my oscilloscope to the data and clock pins and now we can see the signal on the oscilloscope. As you can see we have a squared signal as a clock and then we have the send data. Each time we send a new value we also enable the clock signal and also send the slave address before sending the new data. Ok guys so that was I2C. Finally let's take a look at another synchronous serial communication, SPI or serial peripheral interface. In this case we still have the clock connection, but we also need 3 more wires. MOSI which is the master output slave input, MISO which is master input slave output and the chip select wire plus the ground reference. So using a total of 5 connections we could send the data. Once again we have a master transmitter and a slave that could receive the data. The MOSI wire will send the data to the slaves, but the master device could also receive data from the slaves using the MISO wires. In this case we don't use a slave address as for the I2C, instead of that we have the chip select. To start a new transmission, the master will put the chip select pin to low, and then we send the clock and the data signals. 
so if you want more slave devices connected, you will need a chip select connection for each one. The advantages of this type of communication is that it's full duplex. In a full duplex mode, both devices can transmit the signal at the same time, so we could both send and receive. We can do that with I2C, because that is a simplex communication. Also, at the same time, the speed of transmission for the SPI is way higher than the I2C or WART communication, and at the same time, the power consumption is also lower. We can set the amount of bits that we want to send in the code, but unfortunately, this communication can send the data for long ranges, as we can do with the RS-232 or the CAN bus. Also, these communications have no acknowledged pins, so the master could send the data even if you don't have a slave connected, and the data won't be received by any device. In case of the WART communication, we could have the DTR or CTR pins to do that. Now this UNREF24 radio module uses SPI communication. I connect it to the Arduino and I hook up the oscilloscope. We can see 4 signals for clock, MOSI, MISO and chip select. As you can see, when we want to send the data, chip select is low, then we have the clock signal and the master or the slave will send the data. So that was SPI. Now you should know more or less how WART, I2C and SPA communications work. Leave a comment below if you want to see other protocols, such as the JTAG, the CAN communication, USB and so on. I've made this video with these three because these are the most common used with everyday microcontrollers. As you could see, the Arduino has all these types of communication on the same board. So I hope that you learned something new. If so, give a like to this video and if you are not subscribed, consider subscribing for more videos. Also remember to activate the notification bell. So thanks again and see you later guys.